Okay, good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, July 11th. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the uh, imagery of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, just before we get started, I want to acknowledge that council members are once again wearing their City of Grand Prairie blue in acknowledgement of the coming Municipal Government Day, take two. Um, I know Councillor <laughs> Councillor O'Toole is going to provide an update uh, for us on that at the end of the uh, committee, but I just want, want everybody to know that is tuning in, why are they wearing t-shirts? There's a reason. There's a reason why. Um, we'll move on to the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes uh, from June 27th. Can I get a motion to adopt those minutes? Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mr. Governor. I would move uh, the minutes of City Council meeting held June 27th, 216, be approved. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions? Councillor Thiessen. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, just uh, in council member reports, uh, it says that uh, I gave a report on the Mighty Peace Watershed. That should be corrected to Water North Coalition. Okay. Thanks very much, Council Thiessen. Thanks for that catch. Any any other uh, things that we have to catch? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, and then we'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Rice. Adoption of the agenda as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Any errors or omissions? Anything we need to change or other items? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well. And that brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. It's an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting for anyone in the community to come forward and address council on any community related matter. Um, and uh, given that we have a relatively short agenda tonight, I'm excited to see what all these people are here for. <laughs> Although, given the uniform in the front row, I could have a guess. Um, but this is the delegation portion. If there's anybody in the community that wanted to come and address council on any community related matter, uh, now would be the time to come and do that. And so as you come forward, if you'll just uh, state your name for the uh, recording secretary and so that people watching will know who's speaking. And uh, we're happy to, happy to have you. Welcome. I'm not sure if I should give these out to you guys beforehand. That's my... You're more than welcome to. Yeah, you can just pass them to the side and then uh, council can uh, understand what you're referencing while you're speaking. And maybe while you're doing that, uh, the two ladies that are there could uh, introduce themselves just so we know who they are. Hi, I'm Judy Parker. I am a letter carrier at the Grand Prairie Post Office, and I'm a chief shop, shop steward of the uh, Grand Prairie Local. Welcome. Hi, I'm Christine Phillips. I am an RS RSMC in Grand Prairie. Welcome. 
Um, I'm Ellen Bowles. I'm the Vice President of Local 744 for the Canadian Union of Postal Workers in Grand Prairie. Uh, this is my second time visiting uh, Council, so I thank you for this time. Um, the purpose for our, our visit today is to just come back to what we were presenting on before, which was this notion of service expansion in the post office with uh, postal banking. So what we've uh, provided here is just some information for council to review uh, with regards to postal banking and uh, what uh, the, the possibilities could provide for Canadians across the country if we were to support this. Um, this is a, a map that we've, I don't know if it's possible, but. Uh, if, if you want, um, you can also set it down on the desk. You see where that X is? You might have yeah. to move your microphone. And then we've got an overhead camera. If you set it down flat, we've got an overhead camera that can even. Flat. Yeah. And then, then we'll have to zoom out and make sure it's right side up because high level is. <laughs> Should I turn it around? Yeah. Yeah, you bet. We might not be able to pull out completely. Uh, however, I'll focus on Grand Prairie. Uh, so what this is, is just uh, an indication of all of the uh, post offices that are located in the Northern Alberta area. Uh, and it includes and extends as high as uh, a high, a high level. And uh, Essentially what we were trying to show here is just that there's a lot of post offices in the area and not only that, but they do extend into some very remote communities. Uh, so what we're asking today is we're, we're requesting that uh, council supports the postal banking ser uh, service expansion ideas and we're looking where we're asking that they write a letter to Minister Judy Foote, who's the Minister of Labour at this current time. And on top of that, obviously, um, we would just like to support, in addition, door-to-door -door, uh, services here in Grand Prairie. And we want to just make note that the Grand Prairie corporate outlet here has been threatened in the past uh, with closures. Uh, this is a, a million dollar uh, corporate outlet and they've been rated uh, within the top 10 in Canada. And so we would like to uh, stress that importance to the community of Grand Prairie um, and just you know, we don't want to see corporate outlets be being closed down. I've provided uh, to the to the to the service manager. Sorry, forgive me. That's fine. Uh, just uh, the information for Minister Foot there, and, and amongst uh, the postal banking information as well. Okay, good. Thank you very much for the presentation. Certainly, a pretty broad service coverage. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I do see uh, some questions from Council. Councillor Logan. Thank you. I. Uh worked uh, three contracts in uh, Africa and all three of those, Malawi, Zambia and Tanzania, uh, did uh, the banking through the postal system, just tremendously efficient and, uh, and close to the people. Getting to a little bit more uh, uh, sophisticated uh, countries, I spent a lot of time uh, in uh, the United Kingdom and in Norway, the same thing applies. Uh, postal banking just makes a tremendous amount of sense, and I want to encourage you in your uh, campaign to make use of that. Thank you, Councillor. Or create the use, I guess. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I see Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mary Jim. Just a quick question. I believe I'm on here. Um, the banking system, why it was taken away, and how profitable was it in 68 or 69 when the, at the time the federal government took it away? Okay, so in 1908, there was approximately $48 million sitting in the reserve for the Canada Postal Bank. Uh, it wasn't until 1968 that the larger banks kind of monopolized and camp uh, lobbied against uh, postal banking. And at that time, even then in 1968, there was about $17 million still sitting in that bank at the time. So uh, to finish off the, like, most years they had banking at that time, they were profitable. Yes, sir. Thanks very much. Thanks, Councilor McLean. Um, Councilor Redburn. Thank you, Mary Given. 
Just looking at the information you distributed to us, and it says here that uh, in 2014, the Liberal Party postal critics said the merits of postal banking should be explored in the context of several different options for the future of Canada Post. Is that happening as we speak? Uh, from what I understand, Canada Post actually, I believe it was in about 2007, they actually conducted their own independent research study on behalf of uh, postal banking, and it was a four-year study. Uh, they're refusing to release that information at this current time to the public or to uh, the Canadian Union of Postal Workers. Um, they, it was an 800-page 800, 800 document, and everything was kind of blacked out. Um, at this time, I do believe that Minister Foote has uh, shown interest and support in the notion of postal banking, and they are exploring these services currently under the public review. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Rice. I note in the information you've handed out that over 600 municipalities have passed resolution that supports uh, postal banking. Is that... Yes, that's in fact true. Thank you. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, last time you were in, last council meeting, uh, you, you expressed how this could benefit, uh, I guess, outlying communities and, and Aboriginal communities such as uh, on reservations and stuff like that. Would uh, this notion or a motion moving forward, if it were to ever come to fruition with the, with the federal government? Would it uh, would we be setting up like uh, postal bank systems on reservations? I think the postal banks would be uh, centered towards the post offices. So if there were to be post offices on a reserve, I'm sure that those services would be extended to the members of the community at that time, yes. Uh, but in the initial stage here, what we're just looking at is using the 6,500 corporate retail outlets that we have across the country, which is twice as many Tim Hortons, uh, you know, to uh, introduce this service and it could expand across from coast to coast to coast. Okay, and uh, I have one more question. Uh, have you received any pushback, not just uh, from uh, from Canada Post, but uh, in regards to like any other banking organizations as far as establishing a postal bank system to date, or is this uh, just an idea that's starting to catch fire right now? Uh, honestly, uh, Councillor, at this time here in Grand Prairie, we haven't done uh, as much uh, out involvement in the community here against uh, the large banks. Uh, however, I think that it's more or less geared towards the money marts and the payday lenders that are having maybe a bit of a reaction to this because uh, one of the advantages here is is that you know Canadians across the country could have access to bas basic banking needs without having the same uh, requirements that uh, perhaps those large banks have. So I'm sure there's probably some resistance. Uh, whether or not that's public, I'm not 100% sure right now, but uh, like I say, it would probably be towards the money marts because that's where we've been doing a lot of the campaigning across the country. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Councillor McLean again. Thank you, uh, Mayor Gibbon. I know I asked this last time, Ellen, when you're in, but I didn't carry it on. Have you noticed, like, my mailbox was broken a year and a half ago. There was a rash of 100 or 200, and, you know, FCM in Niagara Falls said, oh, no, we'll just no service door to door and everything's good and it's good for everybody, but I don't think it is. Has there been any lately of break-ins? Is, is, has it gone away or are we noticing still break-ins for identity theft in mailboxes? Uh, do you know that? Yeah, Sister Christine, if you'd like to respond. Yeah, I've had some, I'm an RSMC, so I deliver to the, the, like the boxes on the street and I've had, you know, parcel departments broken into and also people's personal boxes being broken into. It happens more on like the outskirts, like in the rural area, because it's easy access to people just come on up and break into the boxes. But I've had people, my boxes being broken into on the street. Just to finish off, mine was in the city, so it happens in the city too, but... No, it does. It happens everywhere. It hasn't gone away. It's still happening. No, no. Thank you. Okay. okay, I don't see anybody else in the queue with questions. Um, Smith Bowles, you uh, saw the process last time. Usually our uh, delegation business is at the end of our agenda, even though the delegation presentation part is at the start. Uh, so council will have an opportunity to address this at the end of the, the uh, delegation. Um, Sorry, at the end of the agenda, the most likely thing would be that it would be something that we'd refer to one of our working committees to do a little bit more research on before making a recommendation for council to take action. Perfect. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your presentation. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. 
But yeah, you. Uh, Absolutely, that's yeah, what the yeah, time here is here for. This chair, just because it's a better angle. Yeah. I'm very nervous. I don't do this. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> at, the, at the at the very worst, there's a there's this big table in between us. So yeah, it's just like a lot of people. <laughs> okay, my name is Christine Phillips. I am an RSMC. Um, so I'm on salary, and I turn around and I deliver to the boxes Monday or Friday. And here I am. Um, one thing that we are asking for is pay equity. Um, and I'd like to see if you guys can turn around and write a letter to Judy Ford, yep. and um, to write a letter to her, because, I mean, I, at Christmas time, I get paid on my route, and I have one of the biggest routes in, in Grand Prairie, I get paid for eight hours. There is times that I have put 15 to 16 hours a day, and Canada Post does not pay me overtime does not pay me anything. They just tell us we have to do it no matter what. And, you know, there's times I go and work at 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't finish until 8 or 9 o'clock at night, and then I'm back in the next day at 6 o'clock in the morning because I have to make sure all the mail, all the parcels are out for our customers. And that's, like, what we're looking for is to pay equity because... And like we get paid 28% less than you know what we should be pay getting paid. And I'm just hoping that you guys can actually write a letter to her just to say, I mean, I'm not the only one. I've been doing this for 11 years. I love doing this job. I love the community. I love talking to people and everything like that. And, um, but like people don't understand how many hours we put in. And you think it's, it's right now it's easy, kind of like laid back. It's not. It's like, you know, I'm putting actually eight hours in and going, woo. -hoo. But, you know, it's kind of like when it gets busy in October, that's when we start picking up until middle of um, January. And my sisters and brothers, we're just like, we want Canada Post to see, you know, the work. And really, I like them to actually do the work at Christmas time because, you know, they probably go crazy, especially when you only get three days training. Then you're kind of like, yeah, see you later. You're on your own body. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm a chatterbox. Okay. Got it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Don't apologize. Don't apologize. But that's my, that's my job. And I'm just hoping that you guys can write a letter to her and you know, explain what I've said and you know, all my brothers and sisters would go through the same thing. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks very much. You did well. Oh, did well. I'm not that much of a chatterbox. <laughs> 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 That's why they put me in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, ladies, for the presentation. Thank yeah, you. thank you. So as I said, this is an opportunity for anybody in the community that wanted to come forward. If there are any other community-related matters that uh, anybody wanted to bring forward, now would be the time. Is there anybody else that wanted to come forward? Okay, I'll ask one last time if there's anybody else that wanted to come forward and bring any matter to Council's attention. I don't see anybody coming forward, so we'll close the delegation portion of our agenda. We'll move on. Uh, we have no public hearings tonight. Uh, we do have one item of unfinished business, item 7.1. Uh, with respect to the Grand Prairie Cemetery's bylaw, uh, that's bylaw C-1332, uh, we need a motion for third reading. Councillor Rice. I'll move third reading, but am I allowed to ask a question even though? Yes, absolutely, yep. Okay, I'll move third reading. Okay, thanks very much. So open for discussion debate on third reading. Councillor Rice, you had a question? Uh, you, you, what are the major changes? Um, Dr. Roth, I think that's your area. Do you want to speak to the major changes to the cemetery bylaw? You say Dr. Roth. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, primarily, the changes were reflective of some wording changes to uh, reflect the uh, increased use of, of um, um, crema cremation um, burials versus standard burials. There's also changes in fees throughout the, the fee schedule, as well as some general housekeeping wording updates. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Dr. Roth. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Just to speak to Councillor Rice first, a uh, couple of them too is if the adult plot be 400 to 600 and a child plot would be 300 to 400. And the last review was uh, 2012 when they raised it the last time. 
They're trying to be up with the Joneses. So a couple of reasons I'm going to speak against this and hope council votes it down. We have a cemetery reserve of over $2 million. Uh, it was supposed to be capped at 1.8, and then at the time administration, once we got close to it, said, no, we'll need about $8 million now. So uh, I still disagree with their findings. And as well, we do about $180,000 added to the cemetery year off of general revenues, people's taxes, property taxes. So I believe it's, it's efficient now, and we don't have to do this. And I hope council votes it down. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Councillor Rice. Well, I think the important thing is that there be always sufficient funds to do outstanding perpetual care. Uh, you know, that is, there would be nothing sadder than a, a run-down uh, cemetery in need of repair. So I think that, uh, you know, I, I would always want to make sure that there's adequate funds to do, as I said, outstanding perpetual care. Thanks, Councillor Marais. Uh, any other discussion or debate? Uh, Councillor McLean. Thank you very much, Mary Gilman. I'm glad Councillor Rice brought this up because it's very good to be attention to details. And when they brought the study for us to go to $8 million, in the study it wasn't where it used to be 80% burial and 20% cremated. Now it's 80% cremated and 20% burial. So the dynamics have changed. So we're probably going to have to have another study to see how efficient, how much we're going to use in the graveyard and how long it's going to last because I believe it's outdated. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Any other discussion or debate? I don't see anybody ringing in, so I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. Uh, third reading carries. Uh, we have no items under reports this evening, and so that will take us to committee business and the Community Growth Committee meeting from June 28th. Uh, Councillor uh, Tarrant, was that yours? Community Growth? Oh, oh sorry. Councillor Clayton is not here this evening. So, Councillor Rice, could you handle the Community Growth Committee from June 28th? Sure. I would move you just have to get your mic. I move that Council receive the minutes of the uh, committee meeting held. Sorry about that. It's got to get to the right spot. June 28th. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on that set of Community Growth Committee meeting minutes? Oh, seeing none, nothing we need to change or amend before we adopt them. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And we'll move on to 9.2 Community Living Committee from June 28th. And I'm pretty sure at this time that that's Council Tarrant. That's correct. Thank you, Mayor Given. I will move the Community Living Committee meeting minutes held on uh, June 28th, 2016. Thanks very much, Councillor Tarrant. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing nobody ringing in, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Tarrant. Yeah, we have uh, one uh, motion coming out of the uh, committee. So I would move that Council award RFP 01-400-16, which is the facility design and construction supervision uh, of, the, and of the integrated grandstand and change rooms of the Community Knowledge Campus. Uh, so for those in attendance, this is uh, the first step in getting the uh, grandstands built at uh, the fields out by um, uh, Charles Spencer High School there, uh, which are uh, a community community field owned by the uh, city um, and uh, run in uh, collaboration with the with the schools uh, there. So this is the first step that would uh, go do the planning and uh, the construction supervision. Um, and then I believe at budget time we'll be presented with uh, another uh, request to actually fund the actual building of the grandstands. Thanks, Councillor Tarrant. Councillor Tarrant, just for the purpose of the motion and uh, the public watching, if you could uh, identify the, uh, the winning proponent of the RFP and the amount that the RFP was for. Um, I know that it's in our council package, but the public that would watch, was watching wouldn't necessarily wouldn't necessarily have heard. <laughs> Sorry, and I so I'll amend the uh, motion to uh, award it uh, to Dialogue Alberta Architecture Engineering Interior Design Planning Inc. Quite the title, in the amount of four hundred ten thousand nine hundred and eleven dollars. Thanks very much, Councillor Tarrant. Open for discussion and debate, Councillor O'Toole. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I was at that meeting, and uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that the company that was chose has done numerous uh, design planning throughout Western Canada. And uh, on the city side, 
our parks department got a hold of the the people that would be using the football, so Alberta football, and worked together with them to make sure that all the needs that would be required would be in this design. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Tool. There's a couple of others in the queue. Um, Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Again, just a quick question to the director. Uh, was there a grant money we were hoping to achieve that's been taken away uh, with this grandstand? So I know we're just looking at issuing it out for engineering, but we were hoping to get a certain amount of grant money. That's my first question. Uh, Director Roth. Uh, Your Worship, to date, we have not received any grant uh, funding for this project. So to finish, did they take away something that's no longer there to, to get? Director Roth. Originally, a source for the f the uh, funding for the capital project was the Alberta uh, Community Partnership ACP Metropolitan Funding. Um, that is no longer available for municipalities, um, and certainly administration is looking for opportunities, uh, all opportunities to to have this work completed. Uh, thank you, Mary. My Thanks, final man. question is, uh, to, I guess, to Gary, he would know this in his field. Uh, Legion Field, where they play football now, they use the change rooms in that. Uh, right now, they're still usable, right? Director Roth? That is correct. The Legion Field uh, change rooms are still usable. They are, um, uh, Legion Field does not meet the Alberta football standards uh, any longer, as it's the standard it gears towards more towards our artificial turf. So that is uh, one of the challenges with Legion Field. Um, I see a couple others in the queue. I'll just uh, encourage Council to uh, support the motion. This is uh, to enable the project to be uh, shovel ready, I guess, as they say. Uh, the intent here is to get the design to a point where uh, whether it was this coming budget cycle or a future budget cycle, uh, Council would have a design that was ready to go to actual construction. Um, whether there was additional grant funding that became available from the provincial or federal governments, uh, or whether it was an item of discussion for our regional municipalities. Um, those would all be options, but at very minimum, this would allow us to get to the point where we had an actual design that we could see a, a detailed construction estimate of. Um, and so I would encourage Council to enable us to get to that point uh, so that we can continue to move this project forward. Uh, Councillor Radford. Thank you, Mary Given. Just a, a little more context to this motion. Um, the committee also, uh, as a secondary motion, uh, sent uh, uh, discussion about construction costs of this facility to the Joint City County Recreation Committee. So uh, we'll continue to seek grants, we'll continue to seek uh, monies from other, from our regional partners in this project. The other thing I want to say is that uh, this, this amount of money is also includes the um, construction supervision and uh, it would be my understanding that if we didn't proceed, then uh, that that amount would be reduced by the amount for the construction supervision. Is that correct? Mr. Roth, I think that's a question for you. How much of the contract was around construction supervision? Um, it was estimated to be roughly approximately $100,000 was related to construction supervision. So the, the amount would be reduced uh, by approximately that amount. Okay. Thanks very much, Mr. Roth. Councillor Rice. So I urge Council to remember that our vision for the Community Knowledge Campus is to develop a fully integrated, leading-edge education, recreation, and community concept that is a model of interagency and public cooperation. And so this obviously moves that, that vision forward. So I urge Council not to forget that when voting for this motion. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, I don't see anybody else in the queue. Uh, I will call for the vote. That motion carries. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes, Councillor Tarrant? Oh, I think that uh, covers most of it. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Tarrant. Uh, we'll move on to the Community Safety Committee meeting from July 5th, 2016. <laughs> Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Safety Committee meeting held uh, Tuesday, July 5th, as presented. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Any errors or omissions we need to collect, correct in that set of minutes? <clears throat> Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you again, Mayor Given. Uh, a couple of motions coming out of that uh, meeting. 
Uh, the first one I would move that uh, Council award RFP 10-552-16 Engineering Consultant Services for 2017 and 2018 Road Rehabilitation, Road Overlay and Road Resurfacing and Crack Repair Program to Bearstow and Associates Engineering Limited in the amount of $1,061,697.50 exclusive GST as the highest evaluated proponent. Uh, just uh, speaking to that mouthful of emotion, uh, the scope of work for the RFP is uh, just uh, going to include the survey and design, the tender preparation, the construction, supervision, post-construction, and warranty inspection over all the work and road overlays that we'll be doing in the years 2017 and 2018. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the motion? <coughs> Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Given. Just a quick question, because uh, I noticed we passed a few over the years, and it's a few percentage points higher, and two, three hundred thousand more. It don't matter. Uh, what was the difference if I can get from the right department done? Uh, this was the uh, this was in the lower bid. Uh, I think it was points was eighty eight, and the next one was eighty four. But how much more were they in the previous bid? What I'd like to know. Uh, whoever can send that, Director Ashu, I can, Thiessen, I can speak to that. Thiessen, do you have that information? Spend money. Sure, go ahead. I sure do. Uh, it was a difference of about a million dollars. Uh, and oh, no. No. oh, sorry, a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was looking, I saw one in nine, I was thinking 100, sorry, sorry in the crowud. Uh, yeah, it was 100, about, about a hundred thousand dollars. I did actually, uh, I'm glad that you brought it up because uh, it was uh, the lowest bid. Sometimes you do lowest bid. Sometimes you do highest evaluated proponent. In this one, uh, it was a matter of uh, almost a full four percentage points. Uh, but there was discussion that came up at committee about uh, reviewing the work and uh, then sending it back to the bidders so that they understand why they didn't get it, where they scored high, where they scored low, and, uh, and to help them achieve their bids in the future. The other part of the discussion at the uh, committee meeting, uh, Councilor McLean, that might be useful was uh, administration reminded council that uh, we use a two envelope system where every uh, project like this under an RFP is first evaluated for the uh, technical merits and give it a technical score. Uh, and they have to first pass through that technical score before their uh, price score is even evaluated. And so mm -hmm. Um, the city provide and on this one I believe it was 35% of the yeah. points were awarded based on the uh, cost portion of it um, so there's those two components about technical capability and cost they are considered separately um, and then the total score combined to get their their points and just to Go finish ahead, up, I hope council votes this down I think we got to be looking at the bottom dollar uh, our, mil our, our property tax the highest in the province and I can remember the same company won the bid three, two or three years ago, and it was two hundred thousand dollars more. I believe we start got to start looking at the bottom line, and I urge council to vote it down. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor McLean. Councilor Tarrant. Councilor McLean, are you suggesting we don't engage in any road re rehabilitation or overlay or resurfacing in the next two years? Councilor McLean. No, I'm not saying we don't. Thank you very much, for, uh, Councilor Tarrant, for bringing it up. But a 4% difference in $100,000 is $100,000. I'm saying we could turn it down and ask for a better price outline. Maybe we need to look at 45 instead of 35. You're saying we're going to fall apart if we don't do this right away? So you're saying, Councillor Trout, if we don't say yes to this, the roads will fall apart? I, I don't think Councillor Tarrant uh, made any determination. He was asking a question of what, what the alternative was to voting for this. Well, there is other alternatives. We've done it before, of turning down different contracts, and we reissue if it doesn't meet the budget, if we think it's too much money. We have done it before. Sure. It's not unusual. Sure. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Um, <clears throat> I guess that I have to acknowledge that the most recent experience with that is actually uh, with respect to South Bear Creek Park, where Council uh, voted down an RFP, and as a consequence, uh, the park won't be open this summer, uh, which is unfortunate. But I think that that's one of the challenges that Council needs to acknowledge. Um, the past Council actually increased the weighting uh, that was given to uh, price in our RFPs process uh, after we had an experience around transit contracts. Uh, the council of the day increased the weighting with the uh, administration gives to price. Um, and I believe that it's important to remember that this is a request for proposals and not a tender. Tender, absolutely, the city of Grand Prairie takes the lowest bid, which is for a supply of product. This is a product uh, or service that requires some manner of technical expertise. And uh, I certainly wouldn't support going with just the lowest price because uh, I think, especially when it comes to roads, we need to ensure that people have uh, the, the capability to do the best design that will last the longest. Um, 
So those that being the case, I certainly would encourage council to support it. Councillor Tarrant. Also, something we've learned throughout the uh, South Bear process was that an RFP, um, should we go to reissue it, we have to wait one year before that can be re reissued unless there's substantial change to the RFP. And in this case, we would literally go a full year without having the engineering work uh, planned for the next year. Thanks, Councillor Tarrant. I don't see anybody else in the queue, so I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, another motion, actually a couple more coming out. Uh, first motion being that uh, Council allocate an additional $315,000 from the Transportation System Levy Reserve to the Traffic Signals and Geometric Upgrades for 92nd Street and 92nd Avenue project for a total capital budget of $1,115,000. And speaking to that motion and the and the need uh, to increase the amount that was originally budgeted, uh, after uh, our, our city staff went through and looked at the scope of work, uh, they realized that uh, because of the traffic volumes and uh, the new the new developments, the max and the and the car wash and along there, that they would need to expand the traffic lanes, the turning lanes, and all that that wasn't really originally accounted for. So. Uh, in that regard, that's why we are transferring the 315 and it uh, would fit within our budget. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on this first portion of the motion related to the 92nd Street and 92nd Avenue improvements? Seeing nobody ringing in, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. I would move that Council awards tender T-49-552-16 for traffic signals and geometric upgrades on 92nd Street and 92nd Avenue to Wapiti Gravel Suppliers Limited in the amount of $916,128.63 exclusive GST as the lowest bid meeting city specifications. Okay. Thanks very much, Council Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen, anything else you want to highlight in that set of minutes? There was really only one other thing that was brought up at committee. Uh, chickens. Chickens uh, at the committee level uh, was brought back, I think, for the second time in a year for, for backyard chickens. Again, committee took it uh, for information, uh, but uh, there were several members from the community there that uh, were encouraged to get together and help uh, develop a plan that didn't involve a lot of administration work and bring it back to council and committee uh, in, at a future date. So if those people are organized and will come back, maybe we'll see chickens again. But uh, for the time being, it is uh, in the information pile. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, I think that handles all of our committee business. Councillor Rice, you had committee business? Well, yes, right, because uh, you didn't ask if there was anything from the growth committee that I thought should be highlighted. And I'm surprised Councillor Thiessen and Trent didn't jump all over this, but um, the uh, Mr. Glavin, the economic development officer, um, presented council with a number of potential opportunities to make Grand Prairie more francophone friendly through the use of signage, marketing, and events. So administration has been directed to bring back a report providing a prioritized list of opportunities for incorporating Franco-friendly improvements uh, and identify which may be possible within existing budgets. So I thought that was a rather exciting thing coming out of that committee. Thanks for that catch, Councillor Rice, and thanks for providing the update. Um, we'll move on to item number 10, correspondence. We have 10.1, uh, and I'll uh, ask if the city manager would uh, care to introduce this topic. City manager? Thank you, Mayor Gibbon, members of council. Uh, my, my, currently under the requirements of my employment contract, it states that uh, should I wish to retire, I need to give council six months notice. And uh, six months is necessary because of time it takes to hire an, another city manager, chief administrative officer. Uh, there's the whole process of going through headhunters and, and the interview stage, uh, usually about three sets of interviews. And then there's the... Uh, actual time the, the, the successful candidate has to give notice to their employer. So it's approximately a six month period that takes to, to change me. Uh, so uh, I am providing counsel with my intent to retire uh, at the end of the year. 
Uh, it has been a fabulous 20 plus years for the city of Grand Prairie, uh, over eight as the, the city manager. So I want to thank you for that, uh, allowing me to serve the residents in, in that fashion. Um, I've got great stories that uh, I'll always remember about members of council <laughs> and the corporate leadership team. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, actually it's been an over 40 year career in, in local government. So uh, it's time to hang up the spurs as they say, and uh, right off into the sunset. Uh, although my wife and I will be staying in the community and looking forward to volunteer opportunities. And uh, that's it. Well, absolutely. Well, and, and uh, certainly recognizing your 40 year career in local government and your 20 year career with City of Grand Prairie, which you celebrated last week, um, is not over <clears throat> because nope. we will have you continue working right till the end of that. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> exactly. <Forever. laughs> uh, but, <laughs> uh, but we certainly appreciate uh, the advance notice. And, and I just want to acknowledge that uh, City Manager Sherbeck uh, did celebrate his 20th anniversary with City of Grand Prairie. Um, and I think in that entire time has really demonstrated uh, professionalism and a care for our community and a care for our organization that's been really exemplary. And so there'll be lots of time for congratulations as we actually get to the end of your employment, because as I said, we're going to ensure that you're working for the next six months. Um, but I just wanted to acknowledge uh, your professionalism, and I think that extends to the way you've served notice to council. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, Councillor Radburn. <laughs> Councillor Radburn. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move that uh, we receive uh, Mr. Surbeck's uh, notice of retirement for information and further uh, direct the mayor to work with the uh, human resources manager to schedule a council committee, the whole in camera meeting uh, to determine the, I guess, uh, recruitment and selection process for our next city manager. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Um, open for discussion and debate on Councillor uh, Radburn's motion. No. Uh, I don't see any discussion or debate on Councillor Radburn's motion, so I'll call for the vote. Uh, that motion carries with one opposed. Um, I don't oh, see... No, I'm not you're, you're, you're not going to let the city manager retire? Is I'm that the... Retire. I don't know... <laughs> If you don't want a process for select a new one. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll, maybe, maybe we'll have a we'll we'll do a we'll do a quick revote. I'll I'll, I'll ask council member to revote, please. Exactly. <laughs> thank you. That motion carries. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, that brings us to item number 11, which was delegation business. Councillor Rice. I move that um, we refer the delegation business to the appropriate committee. Okay. Uh, so that was with respect to the uh, postal union presentation? Okay. Yeah. But both of, there's two, two issues, the postal banking and the uh, wage. Excellent. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So a motion to refer to one of our working committees. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Uh, and uh, administration will review the issue and determine which of the committees would be the appropriate one to send it to. I don't see anybody in the queue. And then they'll notify the people which one it's going to? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure we have contact information. I'm sure we can do that, Councillor Rice. Thank you. Um, no discussion or debate. I don't see anybody ringing in in the queue for that, so I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, we had no other delegation business. We had no notices of motion, so that'd take us to council member reports. And we'll start at the top of the list with the AUMA, the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association, from Councillor Rice. I, okay, I have a a kind of a lengthy report uh, from the Alberta Recycling Management Authority. Um, uh, present uh, plans are being made. Uh, commemorating the milestone of 100 million tires being recycled since ARMA was formed, which I think is is really exciting news. Um, last year, uh, total paint processed was 2,610,128 litres of paint and 537,516 spray cans recycled. Um, as it relates to electronics, uh, 760,193 units 
uh, have been collected, which includes 50,319 laptops and 187,825 printers. And uh, the, uh, the household hazardous waste, um, Alberta Recycling has a contract with Alberta Environment to administer funding for the household hazardous waste program. Uh, so there were 92 roundups in addition to a number of year-round sites. And uh, the aerosol containers were recycled as scrap metal and the remaining household hazardous waste material was sent to the Swan Hills Treatment Center for proper disposal. The, this work is extremely important to the municipalities because um, I just shudder to think what the cost of building a new landfill would be uh, to say nothing of you're going to go further out and the further out you go your your operating costs rise and so um, recycling is extremely important to extend the life of the landfill and it's something that's always been for a long time extremely important to Grand Prairie when um, Councillor Logan's brainchild of Northern Care was first uh, implemented. It was the first time in history that 37 municipalities, including a city, a county, towns, villages, IDs, and MDs, had got together to say, let's pool our stuff and maybe we can get recycling started. So Grand Prairie has long been a leader and uh, we are now working um, with Aquatero at the landfill, exploring the potential of a marshalling area at our landfill. Sure. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, and then I believe, did you also have Grand Prairie Airport Commission? I did have Grand Prairie Airport Commission, just a very brief one. Um, Grand Prairie Airport current uh, year to date, uh, there's an 8.6% decrease in passengers over the same period in 20, uh, 2015. Um, however, um, that might sound kind of dire till you consider in the first quarter of 2016, we moved 101,370 people, uh, which is, is quite a phenomenal number. Uh, the commission has been really busy and has approved and enacted 20 governance policies um, and are working at reviewing the rest of them. Thanks for the update, Councillor Rice. Certainly appreciate seeing the changes that have been happening there since we've uh, uh, had some change to the composition of the board and some uh, energetic new board members. Certainly appreciate it. Uh, I don't think we had any more reports from externals, agencies, boards, and commissions. Uh, so I'll ask uh, Councillor Tarrant if he'd like to do Council Roundtable and lead us off with that. Thank you, Mayor Kevin. A couple quiet weeks for me, but I did spend the day uh, last Tuesday at our assessment review board hearings. It was my uh, first one after taking the course, and it was uh, interesting to see the process unfold. Unfortunately, not one of the uh, five uh, appellants came in, but uh, we still had to have the hearings uh, nonetheless, and uh, it was a good learning experience for everyone involved. Thanks very much, Councillor Tarrant. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, just a couple of highlights. I uh, just wanted to recognize all those involved, uh, both uh, uh, from Downtown Association, Helen and team, and uh, and our own staff for their uh, work in uh, in uh, supporting the Kennedy Parade. Uh, again, uh, really enjoyed uh, the parade and uh, great turnout, and uh, it's a great opportunity for us to uh, celebrate Canada Day. Also, wanted to say uh, that. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend the Kayak Water Polo Club Nationals at uh, Muskoseepi Pound. Uh, Pond. Pound. <laughs> Pond. Uh, there was uh, it was a spectacular uh, venue for these championships. Uh, just seeing the action in real games on the pound uh, just brought, uh, uh, yeah, just felt uh, really good in, in the head and the heart to see that uh, we are hosting uh, such a championship uh, in, in a sport that sometimes isn't that well known, but has a uh, core group of really active participants and excellent athletes from Grand Prairie. And finally, I uh, brought greetings and attended the Cultural Integration Academy graduation number six. Uh, I've gone to five of the six now. And uh, this was the, uh, I think, 18. It was the highest attendance for any of the uh, uh, programs. 
And uh, there's, um, we'll be looking at this again in budget time, but there's money uh, to do two more before uh, the money is uh, not budgeted for, and we'll have to look at it then. Thank you, Regan. Thank you very much, Councillor Auburn. Councillor uh, O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I do also want to bring up the Canada Day celebrations. Uh, my council uh, colleague, uh, Lauren Radburn, and myself, and Chris Thiessen, we handed out a pickup truck load of candy. Uh, we walked on both sides of the road, and I think that this is probably one of the largest attended parades in a long time. Uh, right from the very start, right to the parking lot at the college, people were lined up. So that was great, and kudos to all that were involved. I also attended a little get together for uh, Mayor, uh, sorry, City Manager Greg uh, for his 20th anniversary here last week. It was just a couple of colleagues sat around and chatted about some of the historic events that Greg was involved in over the last 20 years. So it's pretty good. I do have another highlight here. Uh, I, today I was out at the dinosaur uh, dig site. There was four. Uh, paleontologists from all over the world. We had one gentleman from China, one general, or one lady from the uh, United States. We had one individual from Finland and one from... I can't remember now. Anyhow, there was four PhD paleontologists there and I was doing rock climbing and I, right now I tell you I am so tired. We found a pile of bones and uh, without a lot of effort so that was pretty cool and I did tell you that we would be handing out a cake to the hundred thousand visitor at the museum we gave him and his family uh, more than a cake we gave him a big surprise and uh, so we're well over 100,000 people in less than 10 months and uh, that would be my report, Mayor Given. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Councillor Rice. Uh, okay. Uh, You'll just have to get your microphone there, oh, Councillor Rice. Sorry. I don't know what to do there. All right. I uh, attended the ribbon cutting of the Grant Berg Gallery, um, an extremely high end gallery that is a very welcome uh, addition to the Grand Prairie business community. and. Wish them well, Grand Prairie um, has uh, always prided itself on having a very strong cultural component, and this certainly enhances that. Uh, the Canada Day Parade, um, I really, really want to express my admiration for Nicole Ridersma, who is the summer events programmer. Um, absolutely awesome. The organization of that parade was incredible. I've been a judge for many years and this was the slickest it's ever been and uh, she apologized if she seemed OCD, uh, which uh, to me was the good news. Um, and so did a terrific job and then, you know, it flowed right into the terrific job Carla Wells does down at Mustacacipi Park. So a big thank you to both of them for the terrific work that they do. Councillor Rice, Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I got just a couple things I wanted to uh, highlight. Uh, again, I want to do Canada Day, but I want to send out props not only to the volunteers, the organizers, but to my councilmates, uh, Lauren Radburn and uh, Kevin O'Toole. Uh, you guys move. Like, you may be gray haired, and uh, actually, you're not. Age, age means. Age, age means age means nothing because these guys really moved. And when we're talking about handing out like a dump truck full of candy, these guys did it all. I started running behind. Pick up truck. Our Pick up took truck. off. Our float took off, and I was running in a polyester suit as fast as I could to catch up. And I saw sad children faces, and I, I couldn't say no to sad children faces. So I stopped and let twenty other floats pass me as I was handing out the candy. I ran out about a quarter of the way through, and I caught up with uh, Councillor O'Toole at Muskasipi Park, and he said that they got most of the candy uh, handed out. So props to you, props to the little Toolies too, and all our volunteers that helped uh, helped hand out that candy. It was uh, it was really great. I didn't mind being a one man float. Uh, and, and that was all good. The other thing I really want to touch on is a bit of council business because uh, it's through the connections that we make that we truly can make a difference in, in the world. Uh, uh, getting to sit on the Pazda, the Peace Air Shed uh, committee, uh, I, I got to meet uh, and get to know a little bit better uh, Ethan Jarvis, who actually works for uh, our MP uh, in the Wild Rose Party, uh, Mr. Todd Lowen. 
Uh, but uh, through those interactions, I never thought that I would actually really co-align uh, politically with a, with a Wild Rose Party member, uh, but I uh, had an opportunity to talk through other instances about environment and policy and uh, to hear from a staffer over a two-hour conversation about being an environment critic on policy and stuff like that, the Wild Rose are really starting to pick up the pace as far as challenging the government to keep their word and other stuff and knowing that a man like Ethan Jarvis is sitting on that committee and challenging policy and making those shifts that we need to see in the world uh, and even challenging the left. I, it's coming from the right and I was actually quite surprised. I left the office and I was like, wow, mind blown here because uh, uh, here I thought I was going to do a lot of teaching and instead I did a lot of learning and uh, sharing and uh, that was really great. So uh, thank you very much for that time spent. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I was only going to bring one thing up. I'll bring two because I heard about the Canada Day Parade. I couldn't be here. It was one of the first ones I missed since I've been on council. But I felt like I was here. Somebody on council pocket dialed me about six, seven times, and I could hear them saying, Happy Canada Day, and I could hear everybody in the background. It was awesome. So anyways, I felt like I was here even though I wasn't here. So thank you very much to the councillor involved. Uh, the other one I want to bring up is about Greg Sherback, city manager's uh, 20th anniversary. We had a little get-together and talking, and one thing that came up in there was about he's, uh, the smaller cities. He's one of the longest-serving CAOs, so that speaks to... Uh, uh, how well he's done in the job, and, and he's been there a while. And uh, and like you said, it's time to maybe hang up the spurs, but I wish him very, very well. And I know he's not gone right away. He's here till beginning of January, which he promised to stick around for a while to help us through the transition. Thank you, Greg. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor McLean. Councillor Logan. Thank you. Uh, just uh, two items uh, to mention. One was that uh, I attended the uh, PACE annual general meeting <coughs> On June 29th, PACE being another one of those fantastic uh, social service voluntary agencies that do such a tremendous job in our community, and kudos to them. I also got to see uh, the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum, which I, of course, had seen because I was involved in the early stages of that. But I got to bring uh, two family members uh, uh, to it, and they were just astounded by it. And now that I had actually seen it totally completed, I was astounded by it as well. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan. And uh, I mentioned Municipal Government Day at the outset of our meeting, and I'm just going to turn to Councillor O'Toole to give us a little bit of a rundown of the day's activities. Councillor O'Toole. Well, well, you know me, Mayor Given. I like to keep everybody in suspense, so uh, thank you for letting me uh, go in a, a second time. Uh, yes, we did have a little bit of a weather situation for the first allotted uh, Municipal Government Day, and uh, Mother Nature was a little uh, upset with that date, I guess, because she blew in and she left a mess. But uh, things are going as planned for this week, and I can tell you that the bands that we had initially uh, for entertainment will be still there. James Morrison Band, a local young uh, group, if you like Mumford and & Sons and the Eagles, they'll be there about 4 o'clock. Things are starting, and they're going to be off the stage at 4.30, uh, another uh, group, uh, I guess, entertainer, Mickey Blue Shoes, will be here, and he'll be from 4.30 till about 5. Uh, local entertainer as well, an entrepreneur, Cam White. Some of you may know him as Arnie. Uh, he'll be here from 5 till 5.30. Grand Prairie Marching Band, 5.30 till 6. We have the Youth Art Contest, and I understand we've got some great uh, representatives uh, with different uh, forms of art. And that will be judging, and the awards will be going from 6 till 6.15. And uh, Mitchell Henrik will be entertaining from 6.15 to 6.45. And the most anticipated and uh, awards that I look forward to every year, uh, heartfelt and the odd tear in the audience, is the Good Neighbor Award, and that's at 6.45 till 7. And uh, then, of course, we've got the... the world-renowned amazing race results that will be taking place and uh, that'll be going the people will be coming in and giving their awards at 7 to 7.15. Council members aren't out of the limelight, uh, limelight either. We will be playing either uh, lawn bowling depending on the condition of the surface or we will be going and playing a game of mini golf down at the park. So um, be prepared to be athletes for part of the day.
Everything starts at four o'clock and uh, bring your appetite. There's lots of hot dogs and uh, all kinds of goodies for everybody to show up. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. And uh, Councillor O'Toole has certainly talked about sports that are probably well within the capabilities of this council in terms of uh, us thinking of ourselves as athletes. I think lawn bowling and mini golf are probably about the pinnacle of where we can expect to find ourselves. Uh, but thanks to the update, Councillor O'Toole. I appreciate all the work that uh, the Municipal Government Day team, uh, including administration, put into making a great community activity every year. Um, that really shines a light on the importance of local government in people's day-to-day -day lives. So certainly appreciate all your work in that. Uh, I just want to highlight two events. Um, on uh, Tuesday the 5th, I attended uh, the State of the County Address out at Evergreen Park, uh, presented by Reeve Leanne Beaupre. Uh, this was Reeve Beaupre's first State of the City Address. Uh, she uh, noted that it was uh, what had been uh, since 2012 when uh, Reeve McDonald uh, by the last one, so certainly appreciated being able to be there in attendance. Um, it was uh, interesting to hear about all the progress in the county of Grand Prairie over the last number of years. Um, I was uh, surprised to hear the county bring up uh, amalgamation um, and was disappointed that although they shared that they uh, had done research that, that, that demonstrated that it was bad, uh, they didn't really demonstrate where that research was from. And so I think that just sort of, for me, highlighted the need to have a bit more of that conversation uh, to compare these contrasting views that we have. But nonetheless, certainly want to congratulate Reeve Beaupre on uh, her inaugural State of the County Address. And then on Wednesday the 6th, I attended over at uh, Teresa Sargent Hall the uh, Transit Master Plan Public Open House. I want to uh, congratulate uh, and thank our consultants who led a really effective open house that I think uh, demonstrated what was possible with transit and what the current state of our system is. I think it was a, a, one of the more a complex issue and they demonstrated very well, very visually, uh, in a way that was able to engage the users that attended, including, including me. Uh, and so I certainly want to appreciate that as we do a lot of work to ensure that our transit system meets the, uh, the needs of the public. Um, and with that, uh, I believe we're adjourned.